हेलो व्यूवर्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल माला केम फिली लेट्स स्टार्ट वीडियो नंबर 86 वीडियो नंबर 86 इज द 27th एपिसोड ऑफ केमिकल थर्मोडायनामिक्स एंड टॉपिक ऑफ दिस एपिसोड इज स्टेटमेंट ऑफ सेकंड लॉ ऑफ थर्मोडायनामिक्स सो लेट्स स्टार्ट इन माय अर्लियर वीडियो I already explained what are the limitations of first law of thermodynamics and already I spoke about the spontaneous processes in that video so here we know that water always flow from high level to low level this is the spontaneous process according to first law of thermodynamics this is the energy transformation potential energy is converting to kinetic energy in that case means according to first law reverse zone also possible kinetic energy is converted to potential energy but we know that spontaneously water always flow from high level to low level now coming to the second example this is a balloon filled with the gas if it leaks air or gas comes out of the balloon spontaneously and the balloon will shrink like this one okay this is the spontaneous process but the reverse one a deflated balloon the air or gas cannot enter into it automatically or spontaneously you have to pump the air then only you can inflate the balloon Okay, so this is not a spontaneous process. Spontaneous means air will or gas will automatically come out when the balloon will leak. Gas will automatically come out. That is the spontaneous process. Okay, now here you see third example. Say this is a cup of hot tea. We know that this. heat energy from this liquid here liquid is tea goes to the surroundings and after some times this tea will become cold and that is the spontaneous process but the reverse one that means the heat energy from the cold surroundings cannot enter into the hot tea and make it more hotter that is non spontaneous according to first law these things are possible one body will release it another will absorb either system will release surrounding will absorb or surrounding will release system will absorb the heat but in our everyday life or in our everyday experience we find that this is not possible heat will flow from the hot body to cold body and all these are spontaneous process which occurs without any external aid and here comes to explain or decide the process whether it is spontaneous or not or in which direction the process will be spontaneous that will come from the second law of thermodynamics and second law of thermodynamics based on our everyday life experience so see water flows from high level to low level every day we observe that heat flows from hot body to cold body all these are the statement of second law of thermodynamics because second law of thermodynamics decide whether the process is spontaneous or not or A spontaneous process will occur in which direction? Already I told you. Here two more thermodynamic quantity will come. One is entropy, another one is Gibbs free energy. With this, we can decide whether the process is spontaneous or not. As second law of thermodynamics, based on our daily life experience, there is no contradiction. Though it is not derived from any theory. but there is no contradiction because every day we observe this okay now 
coming to the statement of second law of thermodynamics already i told you all this spontaneous process water flows from high level to low level heat flows from hot body to cold body all these spontaneous processes are also the statement of second law of thermodynamics because it gives the direction of this spontaneous process now this second law of thermodynamics can be stated in three ways number one second law of thermodynamics for heat engine that is kelvin planck statement number two second law of thermodynamics for heat pump oblique refrigerator that is clausius statement number three second law of thermodynamics based on entropy so one after another we'll explain all these things so first one kelvin planck statement what is this say look at here this is a heat source say it is a heat reservoir and this is heat engine heat engine means which can convert heat into mechanical work that means using that engine you can transform heat into mechanical work now this heat engine it cannot convert all this heat heat energy which it is absorbing from this heat source or heat reservoir completely into mechanical work in a cyclic process so what i told that heat engine cannot take means if it takes heat from the source or high temperature heat source cannot completely convert it into mechanical work completely convert into mechanical work a part of it it is converting to mechanical work and another part it brings some changes elsewhere either in the system or in the surrounding okay so what it is written it is impossible to construct a device means heat engine operating in a cycle which is operating in a cycle or in other way a cyclic heat engine which works on a single heat source taking heat from one source and converts all of its heat entire heat completely into work without any other effect whatever heat it is it is absorbing from the heat source it cannot convert completely into mechanical work say here it is absorbing 100 joules complete 100 joules it cannot convert to mechanical work in a cyclic process without making some changes elsewhere or without any other effect that is not possible okay so according to this diagram this is possible as per the first law of thermodynamics okay heat engine is converting heat into mechanical work but as per second law it is not possible as per kelvin planck statement of second law it is not possible when it is possible it is said that it will bring some changes elsewhere either system or surroundings in my previous videos i told you that a part of it if it is not released to the low temperature any reservoir then a part of it it brings the it increases the entropy of the system or randomness of the system okay now here you see this one this heat engine here we need the two heat reservoir it is possible in a cyclic process to convert heat to mechanical work but not completely if you want that there will be no changes anywhere then what you have to do you have to give two heat reservoir one is high temperature heat source another one is low temperature heat source or that means the cold body low temperature heat reservoir okay 
now the what the heat engine will do it will absorb heat from the high temperature heat source or high temperature reservoir in a cyclic process and what it will do a part of it it will convert to mechanical work remaining part it will release to the low temperature reservoir or here it is cold body then it is possible in a cyclic process okay if only one heat source is there a part of heat which is absorbed by the heat engine will be converted to mechanical work another part will bring some changes as per this kelvin planck statement so this is not possible according to second law or according to kelvin planck statement in a cyclic process but this is possible <coughs> in that case if you don't want to bring any other changes then you have to you have to keep two heat reservoir one is at high temperature one is at low temperature heat engine will absorb heat from high temperature a part of it it will convert to mechanical work remaining part it will release to the cold body or low temperature reservoir that means heat engine is not 100% efficient no machine is 100% efficient it has some efficiency it has some efficiency to convert some amount to work but not completely if its efficiency is more it will convert more percentage of heat into mechanical work less percentage it will release to the cold body okay so this is kelvin planck statement now coming to the clausius statement okay what is clausius statement look at this diagram this is a cold body okay and this is hot body and this is a pump okay if you want to say, say if you want to take water from the lower level to higher level you have to use the pump that is non spontaneous process or external support or external aid even here also if you want to take heat from the cold body to hot body then you have to apply some external aid say pump is doing that one but this pump cannot take heat from the cold body and release it to the hot body without any external work done on it or without absorbing any external work that is not possible okay so clausius statement means it is impossible to construct a device operating in a cycle that can transfer heat from cold body to hot body without absorbing any work you have to apply some work then only the pump can take heat from the cold body and transfer it to the hot body so in other words heat cannot itself flow from colder body to hotter body so this type of pump is not possible okay this type of pump is possible where this pump is taking heat from the cold body and mechanical work is done on it it is absorbing this work then it is transferring this heat from the cold body to hot body until and unless some external work is done or the pump absorb the work it cannot transfer heat from the cold body to hot body that means in other words heat cannot flow spontaneously or heat cannot flow from the cold body to hot body this is clausius statement now so what is the conclusion heat always flows from higher temperature body to lower temperature body and its reverse flow does not take place on its own it has to absorb some work then only it is possible by the pump now coming to the third one that is entropy statement already i discussed in my previous video see all natural processes are spontaneous which occurs without any external aid and all the spontaneous processes are irreversible these are all are the statement of second law of thermodynamics irreversible that means it cannot be reversed back easily 
and entropy increases in the irreversible process. And as all the natural processes are spontaneous, that is irreversible, so entropy of the universe continuously it is increasing. We will take one example. Say, this is a metal rod. This is the hot end. In the metal rod, this is the hot end. And this is the cold end, cold part. Okay. What we know that spontaneously heat will flow from the hot end to cold end. Right. Now initially say when one end is hot another end is cold. That means all the hot atoms are in one side. Cold atoms are in one side. And this is a this is an ordered arrangement. But when heat will flow from here to here, that means the heat is transferring from the hot atom to cold atom, again hot atom to cold atom, like that. So finally, there is an intermixing of the hot atom and cold atom and that is a disorderness. That means random arrangement or disorderness increases. That means entropy increases. So in all the spontaneous process, disorderness or entropy increases that means this entropy can be the criteria of the spontaneous process the process where entropy increases that will be the spontaneous process in in my earlier videos also i have explained so using this second law of thermodynamics where you will get the idea of entropy even will come across of gibbs free energy with this, we can decide whether a process or, or a reaction will be spontaneous or not. So finally, what is the gist of this second law of thermodynamics? Gist of this second law of thermodynamics is that 100% efficiency is not possible. That means in any machine, it cannot convert the energy 100% to the other form. Heat cannot be completely converted to mechanical work. So, it is mainly that, mainly telling that efficiency cannot be 100%. And another one, what it is, what information it is giving? That entropy of the universe or entropy in the natural process or in the spontaneous process continuously increasing. That means if the process is spontaneous, entropy will increase. So increase in the entropy of the universe, that is one thing. And another thing is that 100% efficiency is not positive. These two are the gist of this second law of thermodynamics. Hope you have understood. Thank you.